under ideal circumstances, I suppose one would like to file a plan right away as soon as filing the bankruptcy petition. Uh, if prior to filing the bankruptcy petition, you've negotiated with creditors and you know what they want uh, and you craft that plan before you even file, then you have what's sometimes referred to as prepackaged, a prepacked plan. Those are rare. Uh, generally speaking, uh, you're probably going to have some battles to fight before you get that plan confirmed. So the chronology does depend on whether it's what I refer to as a classic or standard Chapter 11 and a subchapter 5 Chapter 11. A few years ago, subchapter 5 was added to Chapter 11 as sort of a streamlined version for small businesses. In a subchapter 5, only the debtor gets to file a Chapter 11 plan, and the debtor has to file that plan within 90 days of filing the bankruptcy petition. In a classic Chapter 11, things are a bit different. There is what's called the exclusivity period. Measured from the day we file the petition, the debtor has 120 days to file the plan. Uh, and if after the 120 days have expired and the debtor hasn't filed the plan, then anyone can file the plan, including creditors. And they may come up with some plans that the debtor really does not like. So we really want to uh, work at getting a plan filed. Doesn't mean it's confirmed, but filed within 120 days. The 120 days can be extended with permission of the court um, up to 300 days if necessary, but you do have to have a good reason. And I have had that come up, as a matter of fact, where there was a pitched battle with a, a specific creditor, and we simply could not come up with a plan until that battle was resolved because the creditors' um, various lawsuits in the bankruptcy court, what are called adversary proceedings, were threatening certain of the assets that would be used in a successful plan to fund the plan. So it was impossible to get the plan propounded until the battle with that particular creditor was resolved. And in light of that, the judge was willing to keep continuing things so that we could get that resolved before we put forward a plan. Generally, though, we're looking for a plan to be filed within 120 days. Um, we also file the disclosure statement uh, at the same time as the plan. Now, in other parts of the country, the disclosure statement and plan might be filed at different times. But here in the Central District of California, generally speaking, it's going to be at the same time. And then uh, we set a hearing, which has to be a minimum of 42 days after we file those documents, where the judge will consider the disclosure statement's adequacy because the disclosure statement is supposed to give adequate information to creditors so that they can intelligently vote on the plan. Uh, by the way, in Subchapter 5, there is no disclosure statement, so that's another way in which it's streamlined. If the judge says, yep, it looks like this, is, uh, this contains adequate information to inform creditors of what is happening in this plan, then the judge will enter an order that tells us we need to send out copies of the disclosure statement, the plan, ballots for voting, and some other documents to the creditors. And the creditors have a certain time window in which to return their ballots. Then uh, the judge at the hearing on the adequacy of the disclosure statement will also have set a date uh, for the confirmation hearing. And uh, prior to that, we will uh, submit uh, a ballot summary saying, well, this is where things are. Uh, we have the votes here to support the plan, or gee, we don't. Could we get another uh, bite at the apple? And then we have to file a motion uh, to confirm the plan. If all goes well, all of this could happen, and you could get the plan confirmed within six months of filing the petition. In reality, uh, sometimes um, there are battles that we have to fight, and that can uh, make the whole process protracted. I'd say, in at least my cases, it can be a year before the plan is confirmed, because there is a back and forth. And although we can uh, 
talk to creditors prior to filing the petition to see what would you like. Once we are in the bankruptcy case, we can't lobby creditors to vote in favor of the plan until the judge has um, approved the adequacy of the disclosure statement. However, um, there is a little bit of wiggle room there. We can sometimes negotiate with creditors about other things that ultimately tell us, well, this creditor would really like this particular thing to be in the plan. So while that may be thought of as somehow lobbying in favor of confirmation, the ethos of settlement is so strong that generally that's something that will be accepted. So the chronology is we file the petition, Within the next 120 days, we propound a plan along with a disclosure statement. Minimum of 42 days after that, we have a hearing on the adequacy of the disclosure statement. If the judge gives us the two thumbs up, then we send out the documents to the creditors. They vote, and then they might have a month or so to return the ballots. Uh, if all goes well and uh, the creditors vote in favor of the plan in a way that can be made precise, uh, then the judge will confirm the plan, and then the effective date of the plan is typically 15 days after the plan is confirmed, and at that point, the debtor starts making payments to the creditors. Now, I will say uh, any secured debts that the debtor has, all payments that come due after the day we file the bankruptcy petition, the debtor has to make those payments on time. But debts that are pre-petition, that is, prior to filing the bankruptcy petition, those the debtor doesn't make payments on until the plan is confirmed.